we go back. Oscar first got in touch with me through his own act, Crack and Smack, to say that they wanted me to do a song of theirs called Sweet Time. That was the first song I wrote with them. It was really easy. It was like a really fun, creative process between us. For our last album, she did uh, two tracks. So she had been to, to Leiden and she loved it. Wait, and I'll do it in my own sweet time. The radio show with them super early in the morning in Hildersham, like at four in the morning. Oscar driving me there and saying, what's happening with your next record? I said a couple of times, like, if there's a chance for me to produce something, maybe an EP or a couple of songs, or maybe even an album, just let me know. And I remember kind of being like, oh, this could be, this could be really interesting. I'll do it in my own sweet time. That was, uh, yeah, how we started. Uh, because of the pandemic, we had so much time to to send back and forth uh, albums we like, uh, movies we like, even books we like, and everything you uh, think could work in terms of sound and, and colors. Production styles from Rotary Connection and uh, David Axelrod. Early 60s and 70s folk and psychedelic records. Italian movie soundtracks. Atmospheric. The arrangements. Cinematic. You know, the, the, the environment you want to put this, this album in. Which were really nice just to have as a, a template for where we thought we wanted to go. It, it didn't quite gel this toing and froing. And then it was only once I came over here, where we were in the studio, that it all kind of came together. Coming to a new place I've never been to before, it's like a fairy tale town, it's so beautiful. Not having anyone other than kind of Oscar as my point of contact. I stayed in the centre of Leiden on my own, so I felt like I was in a, fil in a film really. Wandering through the streets of Leiden in my own imagination that inspired different sounds and different musical ideas and it allowed me to create a very free soundscape to then start honing in, honing in. I'd get up really early, I'd get up at five, sort of get myself in a zone and then walk through empty Leiden. The studio is like five minutes just that way, down and you know, along the canals. So I'd go into an empty studio, really, really lovely studio, and then just play on the piano for about three to four hours. And yet loads, loads of ideas came up. The way she plays piano is, uh, it's not like, you know, a lot of songwriters that just play the chords and they sing, that's it. The way she plays puts you in a kind of direction as well. So you're like, okay, that's like Stevie Wonder. Oh no, it's more like uh, uh, Brazilian. I would spend a few hours on that piano, working things out, and then Oscar would come in a bit later. Oh, is there coffee? No, not yet, but I'm just gonna be... Oh, God, I forgot the coffee! Ah! And we would work then together ferociously. And then I would leave him to have his own time to play with it. And then we, that became our routine and worked really nicely.
I loved being a lone adventurer here. There was something so nice about it. I felt like I was very much alone a lot of the time in the studio to do what I wanted in a new city. Um, Pilgrim was another one actually that just wrote itself in that in Oscar's studio on on a guitar in about five minutes. Sometimes they just flop out easily. <laughs> I'm on the outside looking in Forehead pressed against the pain But I'm merely a traveller in my mind Call me a fool Call me unwise But I'm just a pilgrim, just a pilgrim there is a melancholy in that, because I think in Pilgrim, as you were saying, there's a bit of looking in from the outside at what other people are doing. It's, but there's a hope in, yeah, in adventuring. sick you were kind of had some terrible fever so you had to go home oh yeah and you had like serious oh, yeah. guilt about me being left in your studio which was heaven for me because I was just having a nice time and I was like don't worry I'm gonna come up with it I'm gonna come up with a hit you know see you tomorrow up with what I thought was like a gospel duet. Yeah. Motowny gospel duet. Yeah. And I think I sent it to you. I've got it on my phone, we can play it. I sent it to you and you were really polite. You were like, mm, I don't really hear it as a single, but like it's a very nice track. And then you came in the next day and started completely changing it. And I had, I, I got quite stubborn of like, I don't like it, no, this is what it's gonna be. And you were very good. You were like, just give me an hour, let me yeah. do whatever I wanted to do. And then after I had it, I was like, oh, okay, yes, you were right, it's, it's better. goes back and forth really so she's it's not like she comes up with a demo she sings and uh, we say uh, goodbye and I I, 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 I produce the, no, it's, it's, she is in the process from from start to end so uh, we do we did everything together really. I already had an immense like pride and confidence in the songs that Oscar and I had created and they were very much like fully formed demos but bringing in Sam, Matthew and Marcus, who I've written with before for the last record, just brought like a, I guess, a lightness to the process and a, a warmth to it that was missing because of, you know, using drum loops and all the computer kind of generated stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the most fun weeks of the year for me. It was oh. so cool because uh, it was like a, a studio uh, I built with a couple of friends in a pandemic. So we just, you know, uh, converted a, a, a classroom into a proper studio. Everything is there. Everything you need is there. And it, the vibe is very good. The whole role play of like, okay, I'm the producer, Lucas is the engineer, and we have the band. It's so cool. It's so, it's so. Normally, I will, I would sit behind the desk myself, behind the screen, and then you have like two things. You have, to, you have to do two, three things. And I was like, okay, you do that technical thing, uh, and you do it very well. He's the best, and and I'm just involved in them, you know, and, and, and in the creative. In the cre bit. 
Well, I'm, I'm very, I'm very glad that I did it because uh, otherwise it wouldn't, wouldn't sound as, as uh, vibey and uh, dynamically as it sounds right now. So uh, yeah, bringing this actual human, the human essence into it, was just such a joy. I kept thinking as a sub single woman in my late 30s of what makes a good woman in society, you know, what boxes are we supposed to fulfill, what roles are we supposed to play, talking to a lot of my female friends and my sisters and my mother and different generations of women of, of yes, of, of traditional roles, I guess, versus the roles of women that I'm drawn to. So what does that, what makes a woman good? song in particular the chorus is 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 playful and it is a bit tongue-in-cheek about these are the roles I'm going to perform to be perceived as good or worthy by society men other women um, and there you know yes it's playful but there is a kind of melancholy in it as well of oh, it's a bit of darkness underneath that of like this is where we've been pushed into in the past and kind of opening up that a little bit. The essence of the singers, which is, you know, up to seven of them for this album, they're such a big part of it um, and have been since the get go. It's not just about the voices or the harmonies or the sound of the, the gospel element, but just the energy of all of those personalities. I knew that I wanted that to be a much stronger presence in this album. And this album was very much about much, felt much more light-hearted in a way, theme-wise, to bring that kind of more playful element. And with all of them that, who are massive jokers, it's like got to bring them in more, got to bring that energy. In. Yeah, London was, uh, was was a mini holiday for me. It was just going to a studio and I just have to listen. Everybody, everything was already like everything was there. Everything was written. Yes. The engineer was just had to listen. Yeah, great. Oh, even greater. Yeah, even greater. Nice. More vocals. Nice. Uh... So somewhere beyond the wreckage? Yep. The tune that surprised me was Somewhere Beyond the Wreckage. 
Uh, so that one really uh, came came about in the studio with with the band. I left everything as it was, the whole recording, and just you know built from there with you know synths and strings and you know stuff like that. Without the band and without those recordings, that one that wouldn't be you know no, wouldn't be as as cool as it, uh, as it sounds like now. It's one of my favorites of the album as well. So. I'm mad that you still got your knickers in a twist Mona me a thousand times a day Put my name back on your list We've had a dark cloud over our heads But it's only a matter of time Before you get over it It's a dream to, it's, uh, to work with, uh, with somebody with such a voice. Put the world to rights underneath another bottle. Her songwriting is, is, is fantastic, but her voice is, yeah, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. I keep trying to sympathize when the world is set alight. I'll always try to make you smile. A lot of recordings we did were just one take, it's really. I mean, I mean, she's just takes the mic and it's just she just has that you know that thing Very good soul music uh, around. Mm. Um, I think we wanted to do something something different. Yeah, and, 100%. Um, uh, yeah, I think kind of yeah. I'm I'm, I'm quite happy with. Uh, I, I can still listen to it. That's a good thing. No? Recently, I was chatting with, you know, um, a couple of the men who work at my label and they were talking about what I should be saying as I released my single, A Good Woman. They were saying, oh, I think you should be using these sorts of words and maybe, you know, I don't think this is quite right. And actually, without me even saying, they immediately apologised and said, listen, hands up, I can see the irony in that you're about to release a song about... Um, you know, manipulating yourself and to be seen as good by a man, and yet a man is telling you what to say. So I, it was quite a significant moment for me of, I didn't need to say anything, but this album has made you think a little bit deeper about possibly the way that you've spoken to women in the past and how to think about some of the female artists that you're working with. So it was a really lovely moment for me of, okay, this is having, whether it's a tiny impact, it is having an impact and, Yes, I guess, and in a wider sense, that's where I want it to go. Yeah. 